Hey guys, I've got something here for you today. I can assure you that everyone in this world will die soon. I have 100% proof. Like everyone, I'm sure that you have at least spent some time thinking about death. We see death on almost a daily basis, whether it be on television, the internet, or even in the lives of ourselves, friends, or family members. I remember when I was young, when I actually realized that I too would one day die. I was filled with dread. How did you feel? Did you lock it away in part of your heart and just say to yourself, well, worrying about it's not going to change it, so you just decided not to worry about it? Or did you decide just to enjoy every single day because death was coming, so there's not much point in not enjoying your life? You know, there is actually huge amounts of ways that we can die. Death can come suddenly and unexpectedly to many people. Actually, pretty much anything can kill us. Did you know that 450 people die from falling out of their beds every year? The person who had the longest bed tripped on his bed and broke his neck. Also, 24 people die each year from champagne corks. I bet they didn't see that coming. I also have undisputed scientific proof that we will all die soon. For something to be scientific, it has to be measurable and repeatable. Is there anything more repeatable or measurable than death? Every person who has ever lived has eventually died, and it is seen and repeated every day of every year. Did you know 65 million people die each year in the world? That's 178,000 each day, 7,425 each hour, and 120 each minute. The longest record for someone living is according to the Guinness website, Francis Jean Louise Culment, who died in 1997 at the age of 122 years and 164 days. Genesis 6.3 in the Bible states, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal, their days will be 120 years. Have you ever thought that even though we have all the new medical breakthroughs, surgeries and medicines, but still none of us can break through that 120 year mark? I can assure you that in 120 years from now, if you're listening to this, you will be dead. So now you know, you will die. There is actually 100% proof that you will die. Does that concern you? Because it should. Of course, we're not actually afraid of death itself, but we're afraid of what will happen to us after we die. Have you ever thought about what will happen to you once you die? I'm not sure about you, but there are only two ways I could really trust or rely on what would happen to me once I died. Number one, I could experience it myself, but I'm not really liking that option. Number two, someone who I trust implicitly and without a doubt could also tell me. Also, I would need to know that that person had actually experienced it themselves. The most famous person to die and come back from the dead is Jesus Christ. There are records of him dying by crucifixion and coming back to life by himself 2,000 years ago. The New Testament contained in the Bible is full of information and testimonies about this. Now you may be thinking many things that, now that I've mentioned Jesus in the New Testament. Now you may be thinking that it is such an old record of events that may have been altered by the early believers in Jesus, or maybe the original meanings have been mistranslated or lost in the ages. But actually there are so many early manuscripts that have been continually being found that show us that the New Testament we have today is what the early disciples wrote about Jesus. The New Testament has been preserved in more manuscripts than any other ancient work of literature. There are thousands upon thousands of manuscripts, some dating back to approximately 100 AD, only a comparatively short time after the death of the original disciples. In fact, there is probably more evidence for the life, death and resurrection of Jesus than any other historical figure in history. Also, have you ever considered the fact that the disciples who recorded the New Testament died for their faith in Jesus? Now if the disciples had seen that Jesus had died and was not raised to life again, there would be no way they would have died for a lie they knew was not true. So we can see that there is more than enough evidence to support the fact that Jesus died and was resurrected three days later shown through the recorded testimony of the people who witnessed it, the disciples. But what did Jesus say about death? Did you know that Jesus spoke more about heaven and hell than any other person recorded in the Bible? He said in Matthew 10, 28, Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus warned people not to worry about dying, but to be worried about dying and then going to hell. That is because hell is a real place. It's a place of suffering, a place of thirst, a place of fire, and a place of eternal torment. But you might ask, who would go to hell and why would God put them there? 
Well, the Bible says that death are the wages of sin. That is, if we sin, God will pay us back in death. And that death is eternal separation from Him in hell. Well, that's great, because I'm not a sinner. Actually, I'm a really good person. What the? Really? Come on. Are you, though? Like myself, you've probably been running from the truth that you have sinned before God. That is because most of us judge ourselves. We don't have God judge us. We look at the sin in our lives and we justify it by saying, well, you know, there are a lot of other people doing far worse things in this world. For example, I'm sure we can all agree that Hitler was a bad person. He sinned a lot. But did you know Hitler thought he was a good person? In fact, he thought he was doing this world a favor by exterminating millions of people. In reality, he was a truly evil man doing evil things. So just because we believe we're good people doesn't mean that it is actually true. God gave man the Ten Commandments, which was shown in the Old Testament of the Bible. This is what's called the moral law. It's what we can judge ourselves by. We can look at those laws and see if we have failed. Just in case you've forgotten them, here they are. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honour your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not covet. The thing is about these is that you don't even need to do them to be guilty of them. You just had to think about them in your heart and you were guilty. Jesus said, But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her in his heart. For example, with the internet we may have come across something showing a little bit too much skin and we've looked at that and we have desired that person. What the? Also the 10th commandment is coveting. That is just that you look at what somebody else has and you want it. How many of us have seen our neighbor's new car or house and desired to have the same thing? We've looked at that new thing and we've desired it. In our hearts we have sinned before God. Trust me, like myself, you are a sinner. Someone who has failed God morally. But then what hope is there? If we've all sinned, what can be done? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing me will never die. Live? You can mean you mean what that we can live? What the But how can we live? Jesus seemed to indicate that we had to believe in him, to trust in him, but why? We have all sinned and deserve death. Jesus took our punishment on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. He took our punishment. He paid the fine for our sins. But of course there is a catch. We only get life through Jesus if we trust in him. Just like trusting a parachute as we fall out of an airplane. We will grab it on the way out. If we didn't trust in the parachute, we wouldn't put it on. And of course that, those consequences are quite dire. Just imagine being in a plane. You know that the parachute can save you but you just can't be bothered, and you jump out the plane. Well friends, that is how most people live their lives today. They've heard about Jesus, they know he can save them, but they completely ignore him. So friends, like the parachute, will you trust Jesus today? Will you put your life in his hands? He is the only one who can save you from death and hell. He has promised to those who trust in him that not only will we be saved from hell, a place of eternal punishment, fire and suffering, we will be with him in heaven, and also the new earth and the new heaven. Jesus said, In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? So although we will all die someday, there is a place waiting for you with Jesus after death, if you will trust in him. Ask him to forgive you of all your sins, repent, and make him Lord and Saviour of your life. But trusting in Jesus and making him Lord and Saviour of our life is something you need to do on a daily basis, every single day. Death comes at any time, any moment, to any place, to any one of us. It could happen today. It could happen when you fall out of bed this morning. So please friends, don't fall out of that plane without that parachute. Trust in Jesus. Trust him to save you. And of course, he has promised us all that he will.